Did you watch the Blue Beetle movie? Yep. Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Beta J. Back like I left something, and I'm glad you're here. Yes, I'm glad you're here. And today, we're going to be talking about Blue Beetle Movie, and this is the spoilers review. I'm not a big fan of spoilers-free video. Tell me all about it. Tell me if I need to spend my money or I need to save it. And that's what I'm going to do exactly for you. I'm also going to let you know, is this worse than a Flash movie? You better stay in tone and watch this all the way to the end. Because I'm going to give you the real. Because I'm not like these shills out here who are paid and say nice things about a movie that sucks. I'm going to let you know the real. Before we get into the real, let's like... Let's hit subscribe and let's hit that notification bell. It will mean so much to me because when you hit that bell, it makes your boy Fader J feel oh so good and oh so swell. Yeah, thank y'all so much for that. And the way I'm going to cover this movie, I'm going to speak about the story. I'm going to give you a brief summary. I'm going to talk about the characters and the acting. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the CGI and give you guys a score of the movie, a ranking of the movie. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the story. I'm going to give you a quick summary. This story here is a battle over the scarab. That is the Blue Beetle power. It's this artifact. It came from the aliens called the Reach. The real name of it is called the Kaji Dai. I hope I got that right. Die, die. I hope I got that right. Yeah. So, the Kaji Dai. You know, everybody is betting over this. Now, the reason why it's a battle over this is because this lady right here, her name is Victoria Cord, played by Susan Saran. And she has this Cord industry. It's kind of like... Iron Man, uh, Stark's Industries, she has this industry where they make weapons, and she wants this artifact so she can build this army to take over the planet. You know that villainous thing that's going on. So you might be asking yourself, well, how the freak the main character, Jaime Reyes, how did he get involved in this? Well, his family is doing bad out here in the streets, and you know what? He just, he just graduated from college. He said, man, let me get a job. His sister came up with this job right here where they're both cleaning up uh, Victoria Cord's house and that's when now everything comes together you know because he also meets Victoria Cord's niece Jenny Cord played by Brianna Marquise and I know I'm running these names because I'm illiterate and I'm stupid but bear with me. So you have Jenny Cord out there, and she understands that if her aunt gets this artifact, the world is doomed. So she smuggles it out of the science lab in the corporation, and she give it to Jaime, you know, because she told Jaime, hey, you know, you got fired from my uh, ass job. Look at me up. And you know, he fell in love with her and her looks. And that's how he got the artifact, she smuggled it, and she was in such a rush, and she knew that the security was looking for her, that she gave it to him when they met up, and that's how he got the artifact, and the thing about the scarab, it's not going to activate unless it chooses you, it's just like Venom, that symbiotic thing, it just don't work right, so throughout this whole movie, basically what I can tell you is, we experience his powers, the coolness of his powers, we experience his family, his family, oh man, they're awesome, but it's just a big battle. And then the main villain in this is a guy named Carol Patch, played by Raul Trujillo, and he's like the, the sub-villain. Uh, you know, Victoria Cord is the main villain, he's the sub-villain. He has his own suit that Cord Industries have worked on, and they pretty much battle it out very, very much to the end of the movie. And the cool thing about it, at one point in this movie, Jaime gets kidnapped by Victoria Cord, he gets defeated by Carol Patch, 
And the cool thing about it is the family comes in and save Jaime themselves. They link up with Jenny and they also get this cool tech that her father's been working on. Because come to find out, Jenny's father is the original Blue Beetle. Yes, they put that in there. Shout out to DC for doing that. Usually DC don't go this hard in a movie, but they did that. They did that. They put the original Blue Beetle up in this joint. And pretty much, they rescue Jaime. Jaime displays his, his skills. Defeat everybody in Cord Industries. And let me tell you something. The cool thing about the ending of this movie was this. The suit unlocked Carapat's mind. Showed him how Victoria Cord really has been doing him. And he switched it on her and he took out Victoria Cord. And everything was great. Everything was dope. It ended well. Now let's speak about the characters and the acting. It's three main actors that I just really want to focus on in this movie. Which is Jaime Reyes. Played by Zolo Merodinha. And I know I ruined that name too. But Cholo, Zolo, he's actually dope in this. It's Picture perfect, perfect casting that he played Jaime. Man, he did a great job. This is our character, and I want to see more of him. I just hope this movie does well in the box office. I really do, because I want to see more of this character, man. He took us to a journey, you know? We saw different sides of him. He wasn't just a silly, quirky kid, but he matured throughout the movie. We saw a violent side of him, and that's what I love to see in these movies. Don't give us a one-dimensional type character. Give us an absolutely dope guy that we can experience it's only a human being type of thing where you experience a different range of emotions especially when you are superhero you know you're gonna go through some things and a supporting cast member that kept me laughing it was two characters that kept me laughing why not have to give it to the sister the sister Melago Reyes played by Belisa Escobedo she was hilarious. She was funny. But I'm going to tell you who was way funnier than her. And I thought he was going to be corny and goopy and lame. You know, especially with the stuff i seen in that trailer. But George Lopez killed it. He played Rudy Reyes and he killed it throughout this movie with the jokes. I was actually laughing. And I wasn't doing that laughing where, you know, people be in the theater. <laughs> and any type of joke. No. His jokes was actually funny, man. So, now, man, bravos to those three because they kept the movie going. But this movie was very heartfelt. You're going to see some scenes where Jaime go through loss with his father. His mama is going to bring him back to reality and put some hardcore motivation in his heart to make him realize you be that hero. It's a reason why you got that freaking soul. So what you need to do is go out there and kick some ours. And I didn't cuss YouTube, so you won't try to demonetize me. But yeah, this movie, acting, story on point. So, so far you already know, I'm not rocking. I'm rocking with this more than the Flash movie. Now let's get to the CGI and the score. The CGI, some scenes I will have to say it was... <laughs> A little bit of trash, but the story was so good, I didn't mind it. You give me good story, I can mind weak and horrible and tra -tra 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 trash CGI. I can get down with this trash CGI, but at some point, you can tell it was a practical suit and things look legit. It looked good. Things look good. Especially when a family came in to save Hame in their big gigantic ship that was shaped like a beetle. I think I actually want that as a toy and I'm not a toy guy. So everything looked good. CGI was on point. Acting was on point. Story was on point. So now we at the point I'm going to give this a score. Now you might be asking yourself, Fatal J, what do you give this movie? This movie is not a classic. This movie is not groundbreaking. This movie did not move the needle. But it was fun. And it was a breath of fresh air after experiencing Shazam Fury of the Guys and the Flash movie. So what score do I give this movie? 
I'm gonna give this movie a big, fat, stinking B. I give it a B. I'm not gonna even give it a B minus, and I'm not gonna give it a B plus. I just give it a straight up B. I give it a B. I want to see more of this character. Please go out to see and experience this movie. Don't be scared. Now, if you want to wait for HBO Max, I can understand that. Is this movie a a must-see in the theater? It's not a must-see. But at the same time, you're going to want to see it. So if you want to wait till HBO Max or when it drop on digital, be my freaking guest because the movie theaters are expensive as free. Get back at your boy, Fader J. Let me know what you think. Was I absolutely wrong and this movie was absolutely trash? Or you think it was dope? Let me know in the comment section what this movie is going to do in the box office. And that is enough from me. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell. Because every time you hit that bell, it makes your boy Peter J feel oh so good and oh so swell. And I'm out of here. Ninja Benny.